Right, we are back on the renovation. As you can see, I've got the Worcester cylinder ready to go. This is going to be my blank canvas to get the boiler, cylinder, all the zones in. Really looking forward to this one. Really, I've been looking forward to this one. So, actually, I'll show you what they've been again up to in here because it's coming along really nice now. Yeah, you can see they've been really busy. This is the cinema room. So, we've got the designer bag to put there, designer bag to put there. There's no electric on yet, so everything's. Um, Everything's uh, in the dark. These are, my, these are my pipes here. So we just gotta work out now how we're gonna bring them the other side because they've actually said they're gonna put in more storage batteries this side. Um, the gas, yeah, we told them not to plaster this wall, but they've plastered it, so that wall's gonna have to come out so we can get our gas underneath and back into the garage. Yeah, today I'm just gonna be planning. Day one is planning where I'm gonna put all my pipes on the wall. So I've gotta get the boiler about there the flue is going to go out there. That's the way I've got to get all the sound valves in because the batteries are coming to here now. Originally, this was just going to be the boiler room so I could do what I want in there, but now they're mainly storage batteries for the solar, which I don't blame them. If I had that much solar, I'd want as many batteries as I could. Um, we've got the Worcester internal diverter to fit for the hot water, but it's going to have two immersions. With the solar, I'm hoping the LG in the summer and that. They'll have to use the boiler. They'll get free hot water straight off solar into the uh, immersions. Yeah, first things first, I've got to find my cup because I want a cup of tea. Go find my cup. So I decided to put the jig there. Cylinder is going off the wall a bit so we can get in here with the flow return. Uh, the flow's going up here with the diverters on, hot, cold, gas. Because I've got to feed the hob up there. You can see with um, a system boiler, but we've got. Looks like hot and cold, that's not, that's an internal um, diverter valve that we're going to be fitting. So it comes as a pack. You get everything here, you get a diverter valve, the wire, which will go straight into the cylinder. Uh, connections, which I'll, to I'll show you how to fit that in a minute. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll turn this into like a combi. So when this cylinder has run out of hot water, the boiler will prioritise the cylinder, heat it up, then go back to the heating. So this is where the sparkies want us to, um, we don't, they, they don't want us to go this side basically because that's where the batteries are going. So, the turns are gonna come in, come in down here and back in. Um, then the flowers are gonna be up there. Uh, we've got to sort out the mains as well. Got one mains to connect there and another one to fit around here. Uh, the blue pipe, because that's feeding an outside, an outside head. It's so well that I feel like, I feel really ill today. Um, woke up this morning. Feeling rough, um, COVID, I can't concentrate on this one at the moment. Um, but you gotta do what you gotta do. My van's in the workshop as well, so my mate's had to pick me up. Um, that allowed all my stuff onto his. Not a good Monday, not a good Monday. Power steering's gone on the van, um, but I've had power steering go, DPF go, um, two new toys. I think the van's cost me like 1,500 pound in the last three months, yeah. But I'm here, I'm gonna do what I can today. Um, but it, not, it might not be a lot. Um, like I said, I feel like crap. I look well crap. So we're going to have a look at doing the internal diverter on this. The hot water. So first thing you got to do is the plate at the back. Just like where the plate exchange would normally be. Just go and do them screws just to get the plate off. There's a screw on either side. Got the plate out. So it'll be in like that. As you can see, it's a bit wet from where they tested it. So what you can actually do you need to take these out so they'll just they'll just pop out like that and you put that back in so it just fits into the back of the plate like that and that's all ready to go on there both sides you get two pipes and I'll just attach onto here there you go just roll him over and I'll put the diverter in so the diverter you can see it's got a blank on it so what you can do is just pull that out it comes with a new diverter and you just push in just like that it's got a plug on the bottom. So there's a lead that comes with the boiler. You can just stick that into the diverter and that's it. That's the kit already. So you can see we've got flowers on one side and returns on the other. To get the spacing on them, all we did was put this little rig together. Let me just put it back together. Just put it on the, off the other side of the wall. As you can see, that'll, that'll line up perfect for them. So we've got to put uh, diverter valves and lever valves in there. Another set of clips there. I'm just marking up now for the hot and cold. So the hot and cold, I'm gonna go there and the gas pipe in the corner because I'm gonna connect it onto, onto there for the outhouse. 
Then we've got to sort out the water for the outhouse, the mains into the house. But yeah, that's how we charged that. I just put the valves in there, the internal diverter. Then with the gas, we just marked on there where we can go, and we're just going to bring it above the border there and straight there. So we're just going to hang the, the expansion vessel on the wall. So, be a tip, put your speed level on the back. See where I've marked that one there. Mark that side. And what could do then? Just put speed level on the wall, wherever I want it. I'll know then, I'll get that level. Mark two. Oh, two lines on the wall. Mark two lines on the wall there, and the other one there. That'll be where I want to hang my vessel. So that's the flow and um, returning there. So what we can do is, I need to go and get the 28 mil fill. I set the 22 instead of the 28, so I'll put the air rate on there. Now, here's the DA rate. I don't see these fitted along, but they are, they're more important than the filter, I believe. They really are. So, do I line the top of that up with the filter? Or the bottom of that up? Hmm. Because that'll be down there, then the top of the filter would be across there. Hmm. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. I've got the flower return here for the cylinder. That's these two. Um, I'm just going to bring them down the wall there. Gas is all in. That's up to the there. returning for the cylinder now. So, it is 15 mil under there, but... I've increased it to, I'm sure you could run that in 15, but I'd rather have a bigger flow on it, so. Got you know, 22, we're gonna get that in in 22 as well. Down here. Um, yeah, then we're gonna do our close couple T system. I'll show you that in a minute, but I'm just gonna get this one in as well. Get him on some ring there. And hopefully, oh, this one here is very, very tight, but I'm hoping we can get one in there as well for the PRV, but mm, it's a little bit tight on there. All right, so we've got the, Filtering, got that low enough down so when you take the canister off, it will come out. I'm just going to cut down the flow now, get the DA rater in. Right, now that's cut, that little nut should line up with that one. There we go. Yeah, DA rater, filter, perfect. There we go, that's it all tightened up now. You can actually swivel these out of the way so you can get in there with your spanner. That is probably one of the best spanners I've ever bought. It's a rear one. But it goes all the way up to like 50 mil. Over oh, 50 mil. Yeah, I've got to pay 30 quid for it. Set it free. Yeah, it's actually the greatest span in the world. It's 30 quid for free. What do you expect? But very wide, that is. It's perfect for the log basins and that. It work well. So yeah, I'm just going to make sure that's tight. Yeah, it's fine. See, that's the air right in. Make sure you get the ammo the right way on it as well, so that'll swivel back up now. And that is the aerator and the filter all in. Let's over the filter, we just made sure that we've got plenty of room there to pull it up. Okay, that is ready to go now. The All the fire washing, I normally put a bit of paste on the washers there. Helps keep them in place and just seals them up a bit better. So the PRV's in. Uh, the cylinder flow and return, the main flow and return. Casting into the boiler is ready to hang. Let's get that hung. All right, that's the boiler all hung. Well, I've got all the connections on there, tighten them all up. You see, it just looks like, just like a combi boiler, really. So I'm just going to get the trap back in there. There's a knack to it. Which is quite hard to do, one-handed. There we go. That should just slide in the top there. It locked in. You got the built in drain off on there. I'll hook back on to there and on the trap. That's ready for the condensate. Before we sold you, I'll show you what the Klaus Couple T system looks like. So it comes off the flow into a T, into another T, back into the return. So that there will go into a pump. Then this will have all the lever valves and uh, two ports all on there on these four here. And these and the returns will come back down, which will go into that one there. So yeah, it works the same as a low loss header, really. It's just a better way of doing it, if you ask me. Really it's the end of day two. Um, I've got the flue in now. That brick wall was harder than what I thought to drill, to be honest with you. It really was, but that comes out around the side here. So what I'm going to do is take the flue terminal off there and twist it so it points upwards. Um, so that's through there. So we've got the class couple T system in, that's all in now. 
That's nice and secure to the brackets. On day three, got the pump in there. So I'll turn the camera around actually, you'll be able to see this a lot better. So I've come off the flow there, got the pump in, and that's gonna come up there and branch off to all our flows there then. And what I'm gonna do is put lever valves in across here. Uh, then the diverters, the two ports, then another set of lever valves. So when we have to work on them, you can just shut the, the valves off and they're nice and easy to work on. So yeah, I'm just gonna solder this up now. And that is all in, ready for the lever valves. So I've got the pump and that in, started on the diverter valves now. So see so we've got 28, 22, 28. I've got one more 22 to do. I'm trying to keep the lever valves so they don't cross each other so they're easy to turn off so i'll put 28 lower 22 is higher i will change them for reds because it's on the flow um but what you'll have to do to turn this one off is actually take the case and the boil off because it is quite big but it will oh, just about turn off obviously the boiler case is going to be there so if you ever have to do that one you're going to have to take the boiler case off which ain't no big deal it just slides off on these nice and easy so yeah that's them three done just going to do another one over here all right now we'll uh Two ports come in, which I've got to start the tedious task now of pasting up the olives. So we'll go and do all the nuts, paste them up and tighten them all up. That's all the two ports in there. Um, then we're ready to be wired up when we're ready for that. Now I'm just looking how to do the inlet control block. So I need to remember that my D1 needs to be within 600mm of the tundish. So I wanna, I've got to get that one within 600 mil as well so i'm going to put it over there so i'll come around into the tundish but you can easily get to that i mean i'm up on my ladders i can easily reach over that i've put it the prv that way because the clips at the front there so it's easier for access and maintenance in the future then what i can do then is in the corner there straight to the stop tap there and that expansion i'll probably move to over there then the red one can go there and we can bring the fill down here. Balanced can connect into there. Hot is gonna go into there. And as soon as this should stay about where it is, that should be, yeah, we might be able to sneak it off, but I don't wanna, don't wanna move it off too much. Obviously you need to get to this for maintenance in the future as well. So, yeah, I've gotta remember that. Well, it's coming along nicer now. It's about what time is he? Quarter to three on the Wednesday. I had done too bad. I could have worked quicker, but I feel like crap now. So I'm just doing what I can. Doing a bit's better than doing nothing, so yeah. I'm gonna have to hide up as well because I'm working in chaos. So I'll move the expansions to here now. Uh, this pipe here that you can see that I've just soldered in, that's gonna connect to where the drain off is. Cause that's the feed to that bar and that's a tesla bar don't know if any of you have seen them before tesla bar really good so you can make your expansion on it like that and um, you can isolate it for when you need to service it so you can isolate it with the it's gonna make me look stupid now mate as i see there's a push button there it's like a lock so you can lock it off drain it down from there it's got its own little drain off then you can uh you can pump it off from underneath and when you finish, turn off the drain off and I'll put it back up. Yeah, that's like a, a lock on there. You have to push it in. And um, that's the inlet there. It connects onto your system. Pressure gauge and the pressure release. Now we don't really need that pressure release, to be honest with you. Because um, we've already got one on the board anyway. But we'll just connect it up anyway. There's a bleed point on top as well to get your air out. And that is solid, really secure. Nice bit of kit. I thought I'd give it a try. I've seen them. I thought I really want to try one of them. So we've piped up the cold water expansion to here. And that's after the inlet control block. And we've got to put a T in here. We've got to cut this down. Put a T in here, up and across. And we're going to have a filling loop there. It's going to be easier for the customer to fill up there. We've only got to get in here then and uh, top it up. And then they can see the pressure on the boiler. Uh, so yeah. And then we've got to get a balanced feed from here across here and then into here connects onto that blue poly as well so it's gonna have to come off there underneath kick round and into there i still i'll go get some more ones and rings as well i've run out um i've still got the, the fluid to sort out as well 
Yeah. Every day for time. Oh, past four. I am a little bit behind on this shot, but I'll say I have been feeling the best. I don't think I've done too bad, to be honest with you. I really don't, not for how much I've had to do. Um, tomorrow is supposed to be all for um, for wiring up. Um, but I think I'm going to have to do some part work tomorrow. Um, half day part work, half a day wiring up. We'll blast through it though. I do feel a lot better, so we should be able to get through it. So I've got the balance cold in now, teed into there. That goes to the out house. That goes to the main house. What we've got to do now is bring the cold feed to the tank. It's got to come over that down and kick out here. It's got to connect into here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure from the floor to there. I'm going to bend a bit of pipe, put it on the wall and have it kicking out this way. Because then I can put the cylinder in and then just connect straight onto there and get it clipped back to the wall. Them pipes are annoying though, where they are. I mean, them two really could have been doing in that corner. It would have been so much easier. But it is what it is. Uh, I've still got the condense to bring across. And that pipe's got to come across to there. Which one? That one's drying off. So what I'm going to do is put a T in there so you can shoot across. Connect onto there and drain off there. That pipe there has still got to be teed in up there. I've got to, I've just realised I've got to tee off one of these, bring it down here somewhere for I'm going to have to go down the back of that pipe. It's got there's a radiator that's getting the opposite side of that wall. They're gonna have they said just told me they're having a designer radiator. It's supposed to be a standard but now it's gonna be a designer so we've got to bring a pipe down. Um so yeah that should be fun. Yeah let's concentrate on getting this bit of pipe working so let's pull a bend get it on the wall and have it sticking out so we can get straight onto the cold feed. So there you go full 90 degree bend that's 470 to the centre of the pipe. That's 470 to the centre of the cold inlet connection. So that was spot on perfect now. I'm going to push the cylinder back just to come straight across and into there. Stick a drain off on there as well. Yeah, I've got to do a pass over now, over there. Over there and into there. And that'll be the cold connecting then. So I did do a crossover. Well, I'll oh, cheat. I had one on the fan. Bang one of them in, so that's down now. So that should be. Let's actually let's try. Try and move this. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to move that <laughs> while holding the camera. Two seconds. I'll move it and see if we line up. See, so yeah, I just push it into where we're gonna put it, and there you go. Spot on. Cold feed. Spot on where I need it. That is a cold feed. Eh? Be funny if I line that up with the primary call then, wouldn't it? So yeah, that is the cold mains into the cylinder. So we could just put a T on there, a bit of pipe and a drain off. I might actually put the drain off to here. It'd be easier to maintain then. But that is the end of day three. See, so we've got to sort out the mains. We're going to bring it around the wall there. We've got to cut that pipe. Plenty of room there to get onto the multifunctional control. But I say, with a little step, you can easily get to that. That's this is going to be where our filling loop is. So I'm going to T, a little bit of pipe and the filling loop there. It's going to be a lot easier for the custom to fill up. But that's all the flowers in, pumps in. I think the electrics are going to go down here because all these are reach. Boiler wires there. It makes sense to put the electrics there. Yeah, tomorrow I'm going to finish off the condensate, finish off the pipe work, and get this all wired up.